Good morning. How is everyone this morning? Praise God. Wow, we have a really amazing morning planned by the Holy Ghost for you. Angel, you can come up. Uh, I have several things in my spirit that are just burning. You know, when you have that burning, you know, God is in it. He was in our service last night, but it was one of those unexpected services. You guys are amazing around here. I just got to tell you, not for anything. I wish my kids did that. Yeah. Could you put the dishes in the dishwasher? It is empty. Both of them actually are empty. So anyway, uh, last night was very spontaneous. And we had quite a service. And I see that you guys are have the vision for media, which we, as our, in our ministry, have a huge vision for media. We bring the cameras in every time we possibly can because I believe that the service doesn't have to uh, end uh, today or last night. Not that it ends because I believe that things are imparted to people and it's for eternity and it lasts forever. But no beyond any shadow of a doubt that spiritual things are transferable and there's elements of things of, of the spirit and the word that can get into people and it changes you forever. As a matter of fact, I was, saw that Pastor Donna has a lot of the same books in her bookshelf that I do and they're from Rama Bible Training Center when we both went to this and went and her husband Barry, we all went to school together in 19 or what was the year? 1876. Barry and I always tease each other about who's older. But in 1977, I think we graduated. We all this we have the same books. I'm like, wow, it's so cool to see that. But all that was imparted to us at Rama has 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 continued to rise to the surface and come forth, and that's why I know that that God is doing some great and mighty things, and he's going to do some great and mighty things today, and that having the cameras here, we can impart to you today, but it's going to continue to go forth all around the world. But before we do, I minister, I'm going to share with you a couple of things about my books, and then my friend Angel Carlos is going to minister. We've known each other since 1981, and we've ministered together prophetically. She's a prophetic psalmist. And in recent last couple years, God's been bringing us back together again, and we've been doing a lot of our KIU events. Uh, Kingdom Intercessors United is where we gather churches and ministries together under one roof in a neutral place for the purpose of strengthening people in the Word of God concerning prayer, for the purpose of prayer, and for the purpose of laying hands on people so that they are continued to, to be anointed with fresh oil in the air of the prayer. So her and I have been ministering together, and We've just been starting to experience moves of God in our meetings. And I said to Pastor Don, I said, can I just bring her? And, and how many of you were here last night? Lord God Almighty, he manifested himself. So I'm thankful for her and her ministry. So before I teach, I'm going to have her uh, do whatever God tells her to do. But I want to encourage you, and I have permission from Pastor Donna, if you want to be in our mailing list, fill out this little card. And don't print in tongues. As you know, we can't understand it. But I have a spontaneous prayer call every so often, and they're spontaneous for a reason, so that I'm not locked into a schedule because I don't need anything more on my plate. And number two, it's for the purpose of if the Holy Ghost gives me an unction or a, oh, we got to pray or a dream or a, an alarm, uh, I can just call a prayer, prayer call, a spontaneous prayer call, send people an email, and we can all join together. We've had, how many have we had? No, how many have calls have we had? Three? Four. We've had four calls. The first call, I think we started out with 30-something. And uh, one, the third of the, the third call, we had 71 people on the prayer call. Now, oh, is that cool or what? You talk about this gospel of the kingdom being reached to all nations. You can do it through via internet. You can do it through prayer calls like that. So it's endless what we can do. So if you want to be on our mailing list, you have to fill this card out. I'm not going to torture you with 
endless emails because I get very annoyed with people who send me a lot of emails. I end up unsubscribing because it's annoying. We won't do that. Um, I do want to let you know that we have our books. This is my new book, Focus. I don't know if I had it with me the last time I was here. Eliminating Distractions for Enhanced Spiritual Vision. This book, the manuscript, was caught by Destiny Image, and they liked it so much they published it for us. So it's pretty cool to have that happen when you're an author and you've written so many books. But this book talks about the fact that you are a citizen of another world, which is heaven, but you're an ambassador right now here on this earth, an ambassador of Jesus Christ, and how to live between two worlds, living from the Spirit, hearing what's coming, and so on and so forth. That heaven is your real home, God is your real Father, and learning how to navigate in the two in the two realms, so to speak. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. So God taught me this in a season where I was hidden in my house and I wasn't allowed to go into public ministry. And I, he just taught me so much about that particular aspect of focus, looking unto Jesus and, 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 and looking away from anything that would distract. And then he taught me about the 10 distractions that are most common to us today. And it's such a good book. So I just want to encourage you to get it. I just want to give this to you, honey. Yeah. God bless you. And then I wanted to share these two books with you um, for the reason being that both of these books were birthed in this church. I know I shared this with you the last time, but I can't stop saying it because there's something about this church when it comes to wisdom and revelation that not only affects you, the people, but it affects us as the ministers and the leaders when we're standing up here ministering. It, has a lot, it says a lot about you as a people and your ability to draw on the gift and draw on the heart of God. And it causes us as leaders to rise to a different level. And we're able to pour out of what is in us to you in a different measure because there's measures of the anointing. You understand that? There's measures and degrees of the anointing, just like there's measures and degrees of the glory of God and the presence of God. You know, the Bible says faith to faith, glory to glory, and so on and so forth. So both of these books were birthed in this church. This one, Decision Time, um, I don't know if any of you were here in that service. It was a while ago, and it was supposed to be on the prayer of dedication and consecration, which it is, because it's Decision Time, the place in the prayer of surrender. But th that Sunday morning, I'll never forget it as long as I live. How many of you are here for that service? You know, and it, the Holy Ghost just gave me a whole new message. And the Holy Ghost kept saying, it's decision time. It's decision time. So that's how we got the title. And then one of the chapter titles is On the Mat. <laughs> and that's where I made my decision. So this is a really good book. And I just want to encourage you to get it. Um, who am I going to give this one to? And then, of course, a love like that, God's wholehearted and healing affection for his daughters. And this book was birthed out of um, the prayer, uh, the, the women's conference. Remember that conference? And this book has literally changed women's lives. The ladies, I made it hardcover just for us. Are you listening? It's an amazing book, has an amazing, has amazing content. And as a matter of fact, in two of the chapters, I deal with things like uh, what an abusive relationship looks like and the title is when broken wings fly and when and then there's another chapter called when silent tears dry because I'm telling you if you're in some kind of an abusive relationship it kind of damage you emotionally but our God loves us with an everlasting love and he is our one true love and he is a faithful father and he is a friend that sticks closer than a brother and he even calls himself our husband um, your maker the holy one of israel so it just switches our mindset especially as women to if we're in an environment where things aren't necessarily healthy god can be everything to us that we need him to be. So I just want to encourage you to get this book. It's just such a blessing. And I love you. And God bless you.
So I'm just going to let Angel minister, and then I'm going to get back up when she says I can, and, and then we're going to see what God wants us to do. Lord, it's all we need. 
is all we need. It's all we need. It's all we need. All we need. Your presence. How we love your presence. How we love your presence. Oh. Let us become more aware of your presence alone. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of Let us become let us speak up more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Come flood this place. Come flood this place and fill me up for your glory. talking to you right now pastor I'm talking to you right now pastor God says he's going to restore everything that the locust and the canker word has eaten God said I'm going to restore to you I'm going to restore joy to you I'm going to restore joy to your weary soul I'm going to restore all of this all of this and more I will restore look for it, look for it, look for it Restore. It's not always going to be like this, no. It's not always going to be like this. I'm going to restore the all of this and more. I will restore. Yes. I will restore. I will restore to you and you and you. All of this and more. 
All you gotta do is look to me, I'm the God of the restore. Yes. I am the healer of broken hearts. Yes. I am your financier, I'll restore it. I'm gonna restore it, I'm gonna restore it. Most of all, I'm gonna restore your joy. Yes. Yes. I'm gonna restore your peace. I'm gonna restore your worship. I'm gonna restore your worship. I said I'm gonna restore your worship. You're gonna worship me in spirit and in truth. You're gonna count it all joy when you fall in the diverse temptations. Because you're gonna know one thing that it's working together. It's working together. It's working together. It's working together. God is working it together for your good. You're going to draw joy from the wells of salvation. I said you're going to draw joy and therefore you will draw joy from the wells of salvation. God's going to give you peace in the midst of your storm. <laughs> He's going to give you peace that passes all understanding. It's going to keep your heart it's going to keep your mind. For I'll keep you in perfect peace. If you just keep your mind, your mind, stay on me. Yes. Just keep it stayed on me. Oh, I just know I'm talking to somebody here this morning. Won't you receive this joy? Won't you choose joy this morning? Oh, God's restoring hope. He's restoring hope. He's restoring life. He's restoring hope. He's restoring joy. He's restoring life. Everything that the enemy tried to steal from you. God said, I restore yes. to you all of this. And I love this part Amen. and more. Amen. <laughs> Amen. He's a God that's more than enough, more than enough, more than enough. I will restore to you all of this and more. You're gonna say when the Lord turn again, the captivity of Zion. Yes. <laughs> we were like those who dream. Let me shut up the Lord. For the Lord has done great things for us. Wherever we are glad, wherever we are glad, wherever we are glad, wherever we are glad. Sing it. Wherever we are glad, sing it. Wherever we are glad. Where have we are glad? We are glad. Yeah. I just feel the restoration power of the Lord here this morning. Yes. Why don't you just lift your hearts and just receive it right now? God, thank you that you're restoring. Yes. And when God restores, he restores like he restored with Job. It makes it lighter, better yes. than the former. <laughs> God, we look, you are a restoring God. All of this and yes. more, all of this and more. All of this and more. All of this, this and more. All of this, all of 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 this and more. Can you turn to that person next to you and say, he's going to restore all of this and more. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Do you believe it this morning?
I hear the Holy Ghost say that he's going to restore your family. That which the locust and the canker worm has eaten, the plan and the works of darkness against your family is going to be demolished. There have been strategies against your family, against your children, against some of your children's children. God said, I'm going to take them out of darkness and I'm going to bring them into the kingdom of light and it's going to happen suddenly. Yes. weary and well doing yes. you are right at the brink of the birth of some new things in your households <laughs> the devil is a liar <laughs> I said the devil is a liar <laughs> The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. <laughs> yes. The devil is a liar. 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 The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. today. Do we have another bodyguard walking somewhere going to fix something? <laughs> you guys are amazing. Well, 
before we get into the word, I just want to share with you the word the Holy Ghost gave me about you. And you already know this, but I have to say it anyway. He said, you're a militant church. And I looked that word up, and it means vigorously active and aggressive. Really? Duh. Especially in support of a cause. Engaged in warfare or fighting. A militant person, noun. A person engaged in warfare or combat. And I, I thought that was very interesting that he gave that to me. I know that's about you, but you see, the more you yield to the prophetic, the more the prophetic flows out of you. When you're faithful to continue to flow in that river, he just continues to flow. When you get something, you got to give it. Because if you don't give it, you stop it, and then he's got to kind of start you back up in that place again. So I'm learning more and more and more. If I get something, just give it, even if the people already know. And, you know, the thing is, is what I've learned about intercession and God's been teaching me is that it's very important to have balance. And, and for me, when I'm on something, I'm on it. If I've got vision for something, I've got it. I'm doing it. But the Holy Spirit's been trying, is teaching me balance in that, yeah, that's your primary calling, your primary goal, your primary measure of the anointing. But he's been teaching me, Margie, you also have to rest. <laughs> really? What's that? <laughs> he said, because rest is warfare. And there is a place of rest for the people of God. Where after we've put on the whole armor of God, and we've done everything we know to do, and we're standing there for, we just rest in the ability that God has to get things done because of the effectual fervent prayers of our, our, the righteous having a powerful effect. So he's been teaching me, you need to rest, you need to worship, you need to just be still and know that I am God. That was a huge revelation I learned in this church. When we had an encounter service and, you know, we were praying and all of a sudden stillness permeated the meeting. And I think we sat there for 20 minutes and God showed me, and it's in my book, Encounter God, that, you know, you gotta, you know what, just be quiet, be still. Let me, let me just, just soak me in and let yourself absorb me. Because when you pray and you intercede and you're a militant church, you're giving out. You're fighting. You're in battle. But just like any soldier of Jesus Christ, just like any soldier, there's a time to fight and a time to camp. And God will position different people in different times, and he'll have them go out, and he'll have others come in and rest. So I'm learning to rest. I believe that you as a church, you're a militant church, but Understand what I'm saying to you by the Spirit. Just make sure you take time to rest. Thank you, Mommy. Yes, Mommy. You can say, yes, Mommy. Okay, we have an assignment. I'm going to talk to you today, and if you have a Bible, some people don't nowadays, but I like my Bible. I had it rebound. Nice to have a Bible. This is my original Bible, and I wanted it rebound. Isn't it nice? But I want to talk to you today, all right, you listening? And I'm not going to take long because then I'm going to activate what I'm teaching, and I'm going to activate it, and I'm going to do it, and you're going to agree. That's all you have to do because I'm going to tell you straight up, and I say this with all confidence, there is something in me that is beyond me when it comes to prayer. I have some kind of faith that I could move any mountain when it comes to prayer. I don't know if it's the apostolic anointing in that focus of my ministry, because I'm not an apostle, but I think I'm an apostle of prayer. I think there's a, a, a degree of that. I, but there, I have a faith when it comes to prayer that when I pray about something, it's going to happen. And so I'm going to talk to you today about contending for the hearts and destiny of our children. 
And after we talk a little bit about this, not much, I'm going to pray for your children. And I'm telling you straight up, when we pray for your children today, something's going to happen in the realm of spirit. Are you listening? Look here at Psalms 127, verse 3 and 4. Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior, so are the children of one's youth. Notice that the scripture says children are a heritage of the Lord. It, children are the reward that came from God to bless us. And, you know, Proverbs 10, 22 says that, and I like this, the blessings of the Lord maketh rich and add no sorrow with it. Now, when we talk about your children, we're talking about your grandchildren, your nieces, your nephews, whoever those children are in your sphere of influence. Are you listening? They are your assignment. And what I've been learning more and more and more is that my children, my family, are my number one primary assignment. I may be a godmother to many and a mother to many churches, but my primary assignment is to watch and pray over our households. My question to you today is, is there a watchman in the house? You can be a prophetic mother and father and be a watchman in your own house and God will warn you of impending danger concerning your children, your grandchildren, your nieces, and your nephews, and even some of those children who are not born out of your own womb because then you know what I'm talking about. You can adopt them in the spirit and they can be your kids in the realm of the spirit. How many of you have many of those? The blessings of the Lord maketh rich and add no sorrow with it. Listen to the ISV translation of that scripture. The blessings of the Lord establish wealth. Now he's talking about wealth. But how many of you know the greatest wealth you and I can have is our kids? There's nothing like the treasure of when a new baby is born or the treasure when that grandchild is born. It is the greatest wealth we can have when we have our children. And difficulty does not accompany it. <laughs> How many sometimes know that that little blessing that was born sometimes causes some difficulty? <laughs> but that's not the promise of God. God has a different plan. God has a different purpose. It was never his plan and his purpose for you to have difficulty with your children. It was always his plan and his purpose that all of your children by, are taught by him and great is the peace and undisturbed composure of your children. That was his plan and that was his purpose. But you know, we have an enemy. And the enemy is who? The devil. And the Bible comes, says that the thief comes but for to kill, steal, and destroy. He wants to snatch those kids up and get them out of their destiny and out of their purpose and get them walking according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, according to the spirit that is at work in the earth in the children of disobedience. It's his plan to distract our children and get them off course. Whatever the case may be, with social media, with jacking their face up, with Phil with filling every other part of their bodies with fillers, with looking at the outward appearance, with looking at social media, whatever the enemy can do, he's trying to sift them as wheat. Like no other generation on the face of this earth is the enemy trying to kill, steal, and destroy. You better mark it down and mark my words. You may say, well, I was raised in the hippie movement. You know, I had straight hair. I went braless. I wore short shorts and my hair, you know, I had straight and I had that thing around. No, 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 no. There's never been a day like this day. We need to contend for the hearts and the destiny of our children. There's never been such a war raged against this generation. And when I say this generation, I'm talking about from the babies all on up to however you want your children, however old they are. There is war against their destinies. And I don't know about you, but I'm over it. I'm over it. Once you reach a point where you are just so over it, 
You will pray without ceasing. You will stand in the gap and put up the hedge. You will not look at the outward appearance. You will look unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of their faith. You will say, I am not going to be moved by what I see. I am not going to be moved by what I hear. I am not going to be moved by the alcohol. I am not going to be moved by the drug addiction. I am not going to be moved by the eating disorder. I am not going to be moved by the fact that my child is 75 pounds. No, you're going to be moved by one thing and one thing alone that the blessings of the Lord maketh rich and add no sorrow or difficulty with it. My friends listen to me, mothers, fathers our children, this whole generation, they're depending on us they're depending on us to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. They're depending on us to put on the full armor of God and take that shield of faith and quench those fiery darts. They're depending on us to speak the word only so that they can be healed, set free, and delivered. They are depending on us as mothers and fathers. They don't know what we know. Call it whatever you want. We live in a seeker-friendly church age. We live in an environment where our children, and I, I know this, this is why we do what we do on our channel, our children are not being taught who they are in Christ. Our children are not being taught the authority of the name of Jesus. Our children are not being taught even about the basic things about why they need to pray in tongues. That when they speak in an unknown tongue, they're not speaking to men, they're speaking unto God. And that they're praying out their destiny. They're praying out the purpose and the plan of God. They don't know that eternity is hidden in their heart. And when they pray in the spirit, they're praying out of that realm of eternity that will affect their future. So don't tell me that we don't have an assignment. That's why it's very important for us, we learned this last night, that we have to stay strong. I know it's not always easy because we all have our own battles we're fighting. But if we would maintain our focus and maintain the focus of training and equipping this next generation, we will not lose heart. We will not draw back. And we will just have such vision and such purpose. We will continue to run the race that's set before us. And we will not grow weary. Because there is no other love like the love of a mother and a father for their kid. I'm telling you, I would die for my kids. I'm telling you straight up. I'd take my kidney out of my body if that's the side it's on. I don't know where it is. Oh, back here. I take the kidney out of my body and I put that kidney in my kid's body. Whatever would save their life, I would do it for them. Aren't you glad that Jesus Christ already bore their sin, already bore their sicknesses, already bore everything for them, that he already gave their life for them? And our job is to make sure that they get where they need to go and that they fulfill their destiny and most of all that they get saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. Okay? Really quick story. I was 34 years old and I was not getting pregnant. End of discussion. So, I went to, unfortunately, for, my, for me at the time, I went to a fertility doctor. And he basically had to do some things. Um, and then I found out that I had to go through what's called in vitro fertilization to get pregnant. I was not happy about it because I was like, well, you know, you know, the Bible says none shall lose their young by miscarriage or be barren in the land. The Bible says in Proverbs that there's four things that are not satisfied. One is a barren womb. And God, you said in your word that you give me the desires of my heart. What's, what's up with this? And as I was contemplating that, I was coming home from Pennsylvania because it was a fertility clinic in Pennsylvania, Easton, Pennsylvania. And I, aren't you glad for the Holy Ghost? Because he wants to give you the desires of your heart. It's just not always the way we think it's gonna come. Are you listening? So I pulled into my neighborhood and as I opened the garage door, 
I pulled into the driveway I could, and into the garage, and I can remember just to, as clear today like it was yesterday. I heard the father say, everyone say the father. I heard the father say, you are going to have twins in your first pregnancy, and you will get pregnant through in vitro fertilization. And in your second pregnancy, you will have a singleton, and you will get pregnant on your own. Really? God hears the cries of the righteous. God hears the cry of the barren womb that is not satisfied. I wrote it down in a yellow lined piece of paper. Took it inside the house. I still have that original piece of paper. And every once in a while, I take it out and I show my children, you were destined to be here. I was destined to be your mother. God has a plan for your life. I know, Mommy. That's what T.D. Jake says all the time. God has a plan for your life because God knows they listen to T.D. Jakes when I would be in the car with them. You think that all the seed and all the things you've planted in your kids, you think they don't remember it? They lay in bed at night and they hear your voice. They lay in bed at night and they hear T.D. Jakes, God has a plan for your life. They hear every word that's ever been spoken to them. The Bible says in Isaiah 55, 11, Jeremiah 1, 12, that the word of God does not return void. It produces. 1 Peter 1, 23 says, it is an incorruptible seed that lives and abides forever. It goes into the hearts of your children, your grandchildren, your nieces, and your nephews, and it lives on the inside of them. What we have to do as parents is we need to water those seeds with our prayers and with our tears if necessary Whew. I could just run around this church right now well I'm not running today I woke up a little sore today I said was it the bar class that I took or was it the running around the church that we did last night I was the only church I run around in. this is the only church that on a Sunday morning imagine this I skipped across the stage how many remember that and I mean, I had this young guy with me, you know, one of my kids' friends. I think he was safe. I don't know. He was a photographer, and he'd never been a service like that before in day in his life. And you know what he said? He said he liked it. You know, our young people, they just want the real deal. They just want you to be real with them. You can't be all religious with them. As a matter of fact, sometimes, you know, just like Jesus, when he came to his disciples, you just got to show your wounds to them. They know you're not perfect. But you know, the best thing we could do is confess our faults to them and say, you know what, I know I'm not perfect. And you know, the beautiful thing is when my kids text me and go, how are you doing, my angel? I'm sitting there going, angel, don't you remember last night? Could you put the dishes in the dishwasher? You know, and your face gets distorted and you're all angry and you got no makeup on and you got that crazy flannel outfit on. How are you doing, my angel? But you know what? My twins, on the first shot, and anybody that's ever done fertility knows, the first shot, I got pregnant. You want me to tell you something that was even better? My fertility doctor paid for my in vitro cycle. At that time, it was only $5,000. Insurance didn't cover it. He paid for it. Yes, he did. Where God guides, he provides. So I was pregnant. Here I am pregnant. And from day one, we did ultrasounds. And it, you know, anybody that's ever had any kind, anybody in here ever had fertility treatment? Anybody? Okay, you know what I mean? It's like you see the babies from a dot, literally, literally like a dot, and you watch. And he's like, you got one baby in there. I'm like, oh, okay. And about a week later, you know, or maybe, maybe not quite a week, we could see that there was another baby in there. Now, we planted three embryos, but we got two babies out of it. You will get pregnant and you will get pregnant in your first 
pregnancy. And you will get pregnant through in vitro fertilization. God's promises are yes and amen. Whatever he has said to you will come to pass. I cried. I wasn't happy about it. Why can't I? Why do I have to go through this? Why do we need all these shots? No, when God says it, it's going to come to pass. But let me tell you what happened. 30 weeks and three days later, I went into preterm labor. Ready or not, these babies were coming and they weren't ready in the natural They shot me up with steroids, trying to like help their lungs. I'm telling you the whole story. I don't usually do this. Like they shot me up with steroids to try to help develop their lungs just so that they could breathe when they came out. And I remember being in the operating room, you know, you will be the happy mother of children. And, and I don't know where that scripture is, but it just came to me. And, and in that operating room, I was not happy. You understand? These babies are going to be born premature. Okay? And I remember, you know how they drape everything, and my husband's behind me. He wasn't any help. <laughs> he faints at the sight of blood. Just go, go, go. And that's when God said to me, here, man, I'm getting goosebumps on the side of my neck. You sense his presence? He said, right here and now, you are giving birth to your children. He said, but now you're going to give birth to their destinies. And right then and there in the operating room, the war began. I began contending for the hearts and the destiny of my two children. And I began to fight for them as a good soldier of Jesus Christ, but more importantly, as a mother. And I fought for their lives and I reminded God of his promises. You said that I would be a happy mother of children. You said that I would have twins in my first pregnancy and a singleton in my second. You said all these things. And you said, and I've quoted all kinds of scripture right there in the operating room. And right, first of all, you know, the interesting thing is, is when you have kids, God has a plan for them, a destiny for them, a purpose for them, a call upon their lives, especially this generation. They're little Rahabs, little Joshuas, little Calebs, little Jeremiahs. These kids got, you know, I get around some of my kids' unsaved friends and I could see into them. And some of them aren't saved but I see into their destiny. My daughter has this one friend, and I'm not going to say this person's name because I do this for the kids. I want them to listen, and I don't want them to think I'm giving away any of their secrets. Otherwise, they won't trust me. And I say this one young man, I'm not going to say his name, but he's, he's a prophet. His ultimate destiny calling is he's a prophet, Jeremiah 1.5. No question about it. How do you know that? He's got a hunger for the supernatural. He does all these other kinds of things. He's just hungry for the supernatural. And he's named after one of the prophets. And, and I just see into him. I'm just going to say it because it's coming up and I don't really care. He didn't have any place to live, so he lived with me for about nine months. And we are really close. Now, he's not saved yet. And my kids weren't even there. He doesn't know it, but he's mine. I said he's mine. I'm his watchman. He's mine. And I love him. And I said to my kids, and I keep saying it, nobody has ever lived with me and not gotten saved radically. Mark it down. It's only a matter of time. And I still follow him on Instagram, and he follows me. He knows all about my book, Focus, and he sends me text messages. That book is really taken off. It's got such amazing reviews. We are staying connected, and I'm not going to disconnect from him. Why? 
because he's mine. He's my assignment. He wasn't born out of my womb, but he is mine. And I have a very strong, per, uh, protective mother-like instinct in the realm of the spirit for him. Why do you think that is? Because I don't think anybody in his family knows how to pray. But I believe that God planted him in my care for me to watch over him and to pray for him. So my twins are being born, and God said this is the beginning. Long story short, Jonathan, God prophesied to me in my own spirit about my son. And you got to watch what you say to your kids. You know that, right? You know, Mary knew a lot of things, but she hid them in her heart. Because I think our kids, if we tell them everything that we know about them, they'll get scared and they'll run the other way. Are you listening? But God told me some things about my son. And he said, you're firstborn. And he said, X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z. Now, when it comes to twins... When they're being born, if they're if they're born naturally and not through C-section, basically Jonathan should have been born second. But because I had a C emergency C-section, Jonathan was born first. So I know, okay, my firstborn is Jonathan. You, you know, aren't you glad that God knows everything before it ever happens in your life? That nothing takes him by surprise? And then Danielle, your goddaughter, you know, that kid, I'm telling you, she kept crawling up my ribs. I could feel her crawling up my ribs. They were trying to get her out, but they had to keep going in to get her. She did not want to be born. She did not want to be born. But when Danielle came out, she was not crying. She's, I said she wasn't crying. Not a good sign. And I start fighting for her next. In the name of Jesus. And just started going to battle for her. Finally, she started crying. Long story short, they were in the hospital I don't remember now because, you know, you have two kids and, you know, then I had another one not even a year later. It kind of like kills some of your brain cells. <laughs> you know, three in one year is a lot to handle. You know, God said I was going to have them. He just didn't tell me the whole story here. He <laughs> would scare me. <laughs> but what I learned about God is he'll never give you anything you can't handle. So don't say you can't handle all this that's going on in your family. Honey, you can handle it. You are equipped by God to handle it. You have so much word of God in you. You have more word of God than Catherine Coleman did. You are able to handle it. So Danielle, her whole, you know, until more recently, she has had one battle after another battle and after another battle. She's always followed God and never strayed from him. But that kid, it's had more battles, and I've been right there with her in the realm of the spirit. And you know what? Your kids who have the most battles, they're probably the ones that are the most marked. Just lift your hands. Oh, dalabashe atalaboho selebeketa. I don't understand it. But I know that the devil sees the potential in our children. And the beauty of prayer is, and what the prayer that we're going to pray today over your kids is, all these years of praying for her and believing God for her and standing in the gap for her, and all this letter writing and all the church she's been to. And she's always had a good heart. She's never strayed from him. She's always been that good kid but had all these little things going on. She had a growth on her mouth that had to be removed. She had a situation where she had a problem with her right side. Long story short, about a year ago, unbeknownst to me, because, you know, when you pray for your kids, you sometimes you just step back and sometimes forget all the prayers that you prayed. You know, she had an encounter with God 
and radically and drastically changed her life. That's what's gonna happen to your kids. All of your children are taught of the Lord and great is the peace and the undisturbed composure of your children. You stand on that one scripture and that's all you need. You're listening, but I don't know a lot of scripture. You stand on that one word and that's all you need. I said, you stand on that one scripture and that's all you need. And when you stand on that scripture and you speak it out of your mouth, you speak it out in faith. But Margie, you know, sometimes I just, all this doubt comes at my mind. I understand, but it doesn't change the word of God. The Bible says it's the fiery darts of the wicked one that come at your mind. That's the enemy. Do you know what I learned about the enemy? Let's stand. You know what I learned about the enemy? That if I'm getting a lot of warfare in a certain area, that means my turnaround is coming really quick. That means God must really be in that. My first book I ever wrote, I had so much warfare about even writing a book at all. I'd walk into a bookstore and I'd hear over and over again, you don't have a book in you. You don't have a book in you. Look, you, nobody needs your books. Nobody needs your books. After about three months of that, I realized God must be calling me to write a book. See, if you understand strategy, understand how the enemy works against you and your families and understand that it's usually the opposite, it'll cause you to have faith arise in your heart. So this is what we're going to do. And I just want you to stay with me. I'm going to pray over your kids. I'm going to pray for all the children that are represented in this room. That could be your God kids, your natural kids, your grandkids, your nieces, your nephews, whatever the case may be. Now, as I'm praying, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pray in English, which is really new for me because <laughs> anybody that knows me knows I'm a huge proponent of praying in the Holy Ghost for hours and recently God's been doing something new in me which is really surprising for our prayer calls I pray all the whole time in English and the interesting thing about this prayer that I'm going to pray over your children is that he gave it to me I'm sitting in my office, and he downloaded this prayer into my heart. So it's a Holy Spirit-inspired prayer. I personally believe that this prayer is an interpretation of hours and hours and hours of praying in tongues. Because what is in this prayer is mostly the Word of God, using our authority and speaking to the destiny and hearts of our children. So I want to encourage you with these words before I pray. Something's going to shift in your family. We've been praying this prayer, Angel, and all, it's like all around me, I'm seeing kids like having these encounters with God. <laughs> Isn't that what we want? I heard Paula McNally say, she, you know, it's when you have an encounter with God, nothing can, nothing, it's like that's all you need. Like, they can't live off of our encounters. They need their own encounters. So I don't know how you want to pray. You can hold hands with each other. You can pray in tongues while I pray in English. You can agree with me. And if your mind wanders, just hook back up with me. Just stay with me. All right? You could stand, you could sit, you could walk, you could do whatever you want. Are you good with this? So I'm going to pray. Huh. Oh, glory to God. I could already sense the faith. I know beyond any shadow of a doubt, my Father, that you hear me when I pray. You hear me always when I pray. That the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man, woman, mother, father avail much. 
And today, Father God, we come to you on the behalf of our children, the children that are represented here in this room. Father, we pray that our youth would be strengthened and reinforced with mighty power in their inner being by the Holy Spirit. May Christ, through faith, actually dwell, settle down, abide, make his permanent home in their hearts. May our children be rooted deep in love and founded securely on love that they may have the power to be strong, to apprehend and grasp the experience of that love, my Father. What is the breadth and length and depth and height of it, that they may actually really come to know you practically, God, through experience for themselves, the love of Christ, which far surpasses mere human knowledge and reasoning. We pray that our youth would be filled through their whole being unto the fullness of God and have the richest measure of your divine presence. We pray for our youth that they would be filled with the knowledge of your will. No, no, no. The knowledge of your will with all wisdom and spiritual understanding that they may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing you, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to your glorious power for all patience and long suffering with joy giving thanks to the Father who has qualified our children to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. We declare that our children have been delivered from the power of darkness and have been conveyed into the kingdom of the Son of your love, in whom they have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. We also pray that this generation of young people would become a body wholly fit and flooded with God himself. We pray that this generation would rise up and call their parents blessed for training them in the ways that they should go. We release our faith together this morning and declare, Father, that as they grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, they will not depart from the faith. They will not be give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, but they will look unto you, the author and the finisher of their faith. They will not be swayed by yoga teachings, Buddha teachings, the new age teachings, but they will see Jesus and him manifested and glorified as the risen Lord and Savior, that there's no other name given among men whereby they can be saved. May they call upon you and may you answer them, Father, and show them great and mighty things and not disappoint them. We thank you that you're a faithful God and you will do it as we stand in the gap and pray. Father, we pray that they will not depart from the faith, from the things that they have been taught. We pray that every seed, every word of God, everything that's been sown into their hearts will not return void, but it will sprout and bring forth abundant fruit in their lives. Father, we agree together as a congregation, one with another, arm in arm, we agree that the word of God will not depart out of our youth's mouth, but they will love your word. Give them a hunger for your word. They will love your word and meditate in it day and night. Day and night. Day and night. Speak to them in the night. Speak to them in dreams. Word of God, we speak to you. We breathe on the embers of their heart. And we breathe on them. Your word, la visto mahatea. And we say, hold on la base la mahatea. And ho and they will observe to do according to all that is written in it. Lord God, you will make our children's way prosperous and they will have good success. We pray for this generation of college students that have graduated from college. Lord God, that need jobs. We pray that you would open up doors for them that no man can shut. We don't accept 
the uh, negative confession that it's hard for our youth that have graduated from college to get jobs. Lord, we ask for anyone represented here who's believing God for their child for a job, that you open up a door for them that no man can shut, that you would surround them with favor like a shield. Now, angels of God, I commission you. We commission you to go forth and cause that to happen on their behalf. Father, I see an army huh, of young men and women rising in this hour. Soldiers, Father, men and women who are armed and dangerous to the kingdom of darkness. Father, may you anoint this army of young people with fresh oil more than any other generation. You said in your word that where sin abounds, your grace would so much more abound. So we are asking today for an abundance of grace. We are asking today for an abundance of signs and wonders and miracles to be manifested to this generation. Father, I'm reminded of Jesus' culture and how they lead the people in worship and praise. Father, we pray that your spirit would manifest as they sing and worship all these Hillsong concerts that all these young people go to. May you manifest the power gifts in the midst of these young people. They don't understand and can totally get to control the operations and the gifts and the manifestations of the Holy Ghost. But Father, I ask, we ask that you would manifest even as Acts 10 44 and while they yet sing and worship and adore you you would confirm your word with signs following Father you said in your word that again where sin abounds your grace would so much more abound Father as natural spiritual fathers and mothers we all agree that not one of them will be lost but all of them will be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth Father we release our faith we release our faith. We release our faith. The force of faith. The force of faith going into the realm of the spirit on the behalf of our youth, our young people, our children. We release our faith. We are not moved by temporal circumstances. We release our faith now into the atmosphere and call every lost, every prodigal son, every daughter home in the name of Jesus. We call you home in the name of Jesus. We call you home in the name of Jesus. May they come to themselves and realize they've left Father's house and may they come running home to you. And Lord God, those that walk with you in this moment, those children of ours that are already saved, that are walking with you in this moment, who have clean hands and the prayer heart, we call upon you and ask that you would increase them in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Zakaya manana menena marando oroba ilisiming endoma, releasing a dondarabasa, releasing a greater measure of wisdom and revelation. Laying on mandonga da baso bala de dobo shatana, and may they understand the word of God. May they open up the Bible or open up their devotional or go to church and when they hear your word may the eyes of their understanding be enlightened increasing them in all wisdom and understanding may they see and hear with revelation that comes from the Holy Spirit of God in their lives the eyes of their understanding being enlightened that they may know what you have called them to do as they live temporarily on this earth. We agree, Father, that our youth will not get spiritually bored, but we ask that you would surprise them with bouts of joy and fun in your presence. Father, we ask that you would manifest to our young people in their homes, in their bedrooms, when they're sitting at the computer, when they're doing your, their homework, when they're listening to their music. Father, we ask that your presence would manifest to them. We pray that our youth would be the generation that Kenneth E. Hagin spoke of by your spirit that said it would be said of that end time generation like it was said of the early church that they that have turned the world upside down have come hither also. Father, use this generation to be the reformers and the transformers that you have called them to be. May they turn the world upside down. Their world. May our 
Are you turn the world upside down with the flames of a revival spirit? May the river of God rise up from within them like an artesian well. So much so, yes, that they won't be able to contain the river that is arising in their hearts. We pray that from this river would come a great measure of boldness, that they would open up their mouths boldly and make known the mystery of the gospel to the generation and to their peers. Father, that they won't hold back. And today, as mothers and fathers, we break the spirit of fear and intimidation that would keep them from announcing their faith to their peers in the name of Jesus. May you rise up within our youth and pour your spirit out so much upon them, my God, that they would cry out to you in their time of need and desperation. May they long for you. May they crave you. May they desire you as the psalmist David did when he found himself in a barren, dry, thirsty land. We agree together that our youth will see your power and see your glory. Abba, Father, show yourself strong to them. Father, we pray that our youth would run successfully the race that is set before them. May they not look unto anything else but you, the author and the finisher of their faith. We speak. We speak. I speak to the weights, the sins, the distractions that would endeavor to slow our children down. And we say, be removed in the name of Jesus. We bind every work of darkness that would put a stronghold on this generation of believers, as well as the young, budding leaders. No weapon that is formed against our youth will prosper. I speak to fear, you spirits of fear, you spirits of anxiety. I say, Komanaya, no panic attacks. You spirits of fear and anxiety that has oh, so much infiltrated this generation. We speak to you in the name of Jesus. We bind you up and we cancel your assignment against them. We speak to depression. I speak to suicidal spirits. I break your power. You can't have any of my kids. You can't have any of my kids. Not any of them. My God kids. All the kids that are in my spirit of influence. You spirit of suicide. I bind you and break your power over them. No, 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 no. We speak to the destiny that it's on the inside of them. Mela, Marana, Menita, Marara. We say arise, shine. May the light of the glory of God rise within the youth of this nation. May they be radiant and give you glory. May they shine as lights in the midst of the times and the seasons that are coming upon the earth. Unamatikea, Unamatikea, Unamatikea. May their light shine so bright that their peers won't, who don't know you will be drawn to you, my Father. May their light shine so bright that their peers would see Jesus and desire to come to the knowledge of the truth. Our Father, we pray that our, mo our youth huh, would be motivated with your plans, your purposes, what you've called them to be, you've called them to do. We pray that they would not lean to their own understanding or what society says or what a college and career person says or what their parents say that they should be. That they would only seek the vocation that they're called to seek. I see so much of that. But we pray that they would sense destiny within them calling them, you calling them into what you have created them to be and created them to do upon this earth. We speak to the destiny that is within them. Come forth. Come forth in the name of Jesus. We command the blinders to come off their eyes in the name of Jesus. Destiny that is on the inside of our children, arise and come forth. Holy Spirit, Spirit of truth. You are the one we as natural parents, as spiritual parents, look to, to help our youth in this day and in this hour. You are the one who will convict and convince our youth of their need for Jesus and to serve Jesus as Lord all the days of their life. 
we depend upon you to lead, guide, and direct them into their ultimate destiny. We declare that our youth have strength for all things in Christ who empowers them. They are ready for anything and equal to anything through you who infuses inner strength into them. They are self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. And Father, Holy Spirit, we ask that you would manifest yourself to our youth wherever they go. Hale marane marasa ye karobo shate. Some of our young people, when they go to school, when they get on the bus, when they go to college, when they get in their cars with new driver's license, Father, we ask that you would protect them in the name of Jesus. You give your angels charge over them in the name of Jesus. We ask that you would warn them of impending danger so that they will stay away from anything that would kill, steal, or destroy their destiny. Father, finally, ha, we declare without a shadow of a doubt that our youth are strong in the Lord and in the power of your might. They put on the full armor of God and they are able to stand against the wiles of the devil. They have girded their waist with truth. They have put on the breastplate of righteousness. They have their feet shod with the gospel of peace. And above all, Father, they take the shield of faith with which they are able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Give them the wisdom to discern what is good and what is evil in this day and in this hour. I declare, we declare that they take the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And Father, lastly, we ask that you would give our young people a hunger for prayer, that they will desire to pray always with all prayer and supplication, even in the spirit. Father, we pray that you would stir within our children and our children's children a deep, deep, deep hunger for intimacy with Jesus in the secret place of prayer. That they would choose the best part of being a Christian and a child of God, and that is spending time with you in your presence. So, Father, we ask that the spirit of grace and supplication would rise up within them and come upon them. That you would anoint our youth with fresh oil. Bring them into that secret place of prayer, wherever that may be, that they will have the kind of God encounter that they need. In Jesus' name. Now let's lift our hands in worship.
and pick up the mantle that God has ultimately called him to walk in. There's a great degree of an, a measure of anointing upon his life, and that's what the enemy tried to take from him. He even tried to take him from you, but you prayed for him that his faith fail not, and so he shall arise. He shall shine, and he shall come forth in his destiny, and greater works he will do than you did. For the ministry will be multiplied. There is a river of generational ministry that is coming down. And God is in the season of choosing young men and women in this hour to pick up the mantle of the power. The power of God that their mothers and fathers have walked in. It's a generational blessing. Yes, there's a generational curse. But your children are redeemed from the curse of the law. I was made a curse for them. Now there's that blessing, that generational blessing that's coming upon your households. Oh. 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 Gonna give you a little secret. The enemy has had strategies against many of your children. And he has hired those from the kingdom of darkness to oppress them. And he's hired them to try to sift them and bring them out and even kill themselves and take them out. It's an assignment from the enemy from those workers of darkness that are in this earth and they flow through humanity and they pray their prayers of witchcraft and they pray their prayers of warring tongues in the realm of darkness but you my people are equipped with my spirit and you are equipped with the weapons of your warfare and the greater one is in you and I already spoiled principalities and powers. I made a show of them openly. So the enemy can't have your children. He can't have your youth. But I want you to be alert. I want you to be active. I want you to listen to your spirit. Look through the eyes of your spirit. And know that it's the enemy. God, I see it like word curses. I see it like curses. Do you know there's real witches and warlocks and wiccans in the earth today? And I gotta tell you, what I'm seeing in my spirit is quite interesting. He's targeted some of our young people. You see, the realm of the spirit is more real than the natural. Oh, I know it's 1201, but we're good. And I'll tell you what it is. He goes pastor over there I'm going to try to get to his kids because I know if I could get to his kids I could get to the pastor and I know that the generation of blessings being passed out to that young person so he tries to take them out <laughs> so be as wise as a serpent and as harmless as a dove know who your enemy is the Bible says we are not ignorant of Satan's devices. Are you afraid? I'm not afraid. Are you kidding me? When I get up in the morning, the devil's afraid. When you get up in the morning, the devil's afraid. He's mostly afraid of you taking your place. And when you take your place on the behalf of your kids, there is no weapon. I'm talking no weapon that's formed against them. Awesome.